I am afraid that I can no longer live with myself. I will have to atone for my sins. What I did on Shiranagasu Island is unforgivable. If I had only looked the other way, I might not have been tormented by these feelings of guilt. However, it is already too late for that. In a manner of speaking, because of what I know and allowed, I myself have become the demon of Shiro Nagasu Island. Hello and welcome to Return to Shiro Nagusu Island. And uh, yeah, my pronunciation is going to be bad. Anyway, this video is kindly sponsored by Catapult. And if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Now, this is a visual novel mystery adventure game. And personally, this has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. So you definitely want to check it out, even if this is not your usual, usual thing that you might like. Um, but there's definitely going to be a lot of interaction with the game world as well. I have already played a little bit of it, and it kind of stumped me already. Yeah, I kinda, it kind of stumped me already, because there are mysteries, there are puzzles, there are time-limited events, there are all kinds of things that you can do in this. So let's start a new game and see what it's all about. Wake up. Wake up. If you don't, things will get really bad. We're running out of time. This world is. Please wake up. Please. Ikeda. Send Ikeda. Was I dreaming? When did I fall asleep? What a strange dream. It felt as if something was very urgent. Maybe I'm just tired. I've been working much too hard. Anyway, I should stop thinking about work. But I shouldn't just nod off at John F. Kennedy Airport. This place was listed in the list of the top 10 airports not to fall asleep in. It's all her fault. Where is she anyway? Hasn't she landed yet? Huh. Ah, well, guess I'll have to go look for her. All right, so now this is where the initial sort of like puzzle investigation kind of thing comes in. All right, so we're going to be looking for her. And, and basically what you can do is you can click on various elements. It's kind of um, almost, it's kind of like point and click, a little bit point and click. So anyway, as he says, so many people, I usually don't like crowds, but I don't mind right now. Feels like I'm going on a trip. All right, so uh, I know that we need to click on this. Hey, it looks like a flight from Japan has landed. I'm pretty sure that she's on this plane. Probably. If the time displayed on this signboard is correct, she should have been here some time ago, though. I wonder what's keeping her. Perhaps she got lost. I'll ask around. Um, uh, excuse me, I'm looking for someone. Are you looking for someone? Did your child get lost? Uh, I guess you could put it like that. She's a short girl. I'm not sure what she's wearing. I'll need more information than that. Does she have any distinctive features? If she hasn't changed a lot since the last time we met, she has very long dark hair. It's so long that you can spot her a mile away. A girl with very long dark hair. I'm sorry, but I don't think I've seen anyone like that. Why don't you ask at the information counter? All right, thanks. Hmm, the information counter. It's pretty far away. All right, information counter, information counter. There it is. I still don't see her. Huh? What the? The signboard is all messed up. Yeah, it is. Oh no, please don't give me a puzzle. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at these, okay? I'm bad at puzzles, all right? The display of the departures is jumbled up. Whoever is in charge of that must be freaking out right now. Suddenly the letters start to spell out something. This world is not real? What's that supposed to mean? Maybe the board has been hacked. This airport should get its affairs in order. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, now, in my opinion, uh, this has a lot of elements of other other kind of very um, mind-bending sort of games. And I really loved those. So this is definitely something that I'm going to be interested in, in seeing what happens. Anyway. The display went back to normal. No one seems to have noticed it. Is that because it happened so quickly? Seriously, what just happened? Strange things happen sometimes, I guess. This world is not real. What an abstract message. Could it have been an accident or a joke? Or did I just 
misread it. There's no way that it was an advertisement. That wouldn't be a place to run advertisements anyway. What could it have been? Well, the truth, potentially. Mm. Anyway, I have to find her. Jeez, what a waste of time. Where is she? Huh? There she is. That long hair. Looks like I finally found her. What's your name? Do you speak any English? What country are you from? Are you with your parents? Uh, um, well, uh, no, um... Jeez, looks like she can't speak any English. She's like a lost kitten. Guess I better go to the information counter. Um, no, no. Yep, that's her, all right. Hmm, looks like she hasn't changed one iota. Still with that annoyingly long hair. She's so nervous that she doesn't realize that I'm standing right behind the airport staff. I could stay here a bit and watch this play out for fun, or... Uh, uh... Ah, uh, she's about to lose it. Guess I should step in. Hey, Neneko! Huh? I Ikeda! Neneko runs away from the airport staff and hides behind my back. Are you this girl's guardian? Um, I'm... Yes, I'm her guardian. I'm gonna say that. I'm actually her guardian. My name is Ikeda. I'm a detective in Brooklyn. This girl hiding behind me is called Neneko Izumo... Oh, no. Izumo Zaki. Yes, okay. Mm. My pronunciation, as I said, is going to be completely off when it comes to Japanese names. I do apologize. That is just... That's just me. I'm generally bad at pronouncing things. Anyway, I came here to pick her up. I have some paperwork on me if you would like to verify this. No, that's okay. I can see that she knows you. But you shouldn't leave such a little girl all by herself. Hey, she may look small, but she's already in high school. Kids her age can travel by themselves, right? High school? Well, sure had me fooled. Anyway, I'll leave her in your care. Just make sure she doesn't get lost again, alright? The airport staff leaves, looking puzzled. Looks like he thought that Neneko was a small child. Uh, what, what, what kept you, Ikeda? You let poor little me get into trouble? Where the hell were you? I was at the arrival gate this whole time. You're the one who got lost. Besides, you're always boasting that you can speak 20 different languages fluently. What happened? Cat got your tongue? I hate you. You know I'm not good at talking to people directly. No way I can talk to a perfect stranger. Ah, that's right. I completely forgot you were so shy. Looks like I forgot about something else as well. Your useless long hair. High time you have that cut. Doesn't it get in your way? I ruffle Neneko's hair. Hey, cut it out. I said cut it out. You're growing a moustache, so stop giving me grief about my hair. Hey, I trim my moustache, so it's not a problem. I have my hair cut short as well. Why don't we cut your hair this short too, Neneko? I would rather die than have such short hair. By the way, Neneko, did you see what just happened to that signboard? That signboard? Did something happen to it? It's not a big deal, but I thought that for just a moment it read, This world is not real. I guess that someone might have hacked it. I didn't see that happen. But this world is not real? That sounds like some kind of simulation hypothesis. If you didn't see the message, then my eyes were probably playing tricks on me. If that is what it said, then maybe this world is actually a simulation. So I guess that means that your brain is floating in a nutrient solution. <laughs> what a creepy laugh. Anyway, I'm glad you got here safe and sound. Some people in New York would like to meet you. You should take it slow for now, though. My car is in the parking lot. Let's go to my office and... Hang on, my phone is ringing. Mr. Ikeda, this is Ada Higgins. Hello, Ada. How can I help you? Did anything happen? Yes, something terrible has happened. Could I ask you to come to my residence? Hmm, something delicate that shouldn't be discussed over the phone? Yes, exactly. Please come to my residence and I will tell you about it. Please, I don't think I can entrust anyone else with this. What should I do? Please don't worry. I'm heading your way right now. I'll be there in a bit. What was that call about? It sounded like something really bad has happened. Um, yes. Apparently something has happened to one of my clients. 
Anyway, I should drop you off at my office first. But perhaps your special ability might be uniquely suited to this case. What? I have a bad feeling about this. Ah, here we go. All right, we're changing locations. We're here. This is the Higgins Mansion. I don't recall agreeing to come here with you. Come on, Nanako. Don't forget that I'm letting you stay at my place. This is the least you can do for me. The mansion looks incredible. Yes, uh, well, what a big house. The ultra-rich live here in the five towns. There's a lot of old money from the Civil War era here. I wish they would give me some. All right. Uh, I wouldn't mind living in a place like this. All right, can, can, can we... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Do I have to go Do I have to go around the side? Oh wait, oh, wait, wait. No, I just have to click on all kinds of different things to uncover different expositions and things like that. All right. Um, an M NYPD police car. Something definitely happened here. All right. Uh, so can we... Can we... Uh, can we walk... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Wait, oh, oh, it left. The police car drove away. Why was that police car here? Do you think the mansion is dangerous? Who knows? Only one way to find out. Let's go inside. You're making me nervous. All right, let's go inside. Good afternoon. How may I help you? Hey. No, long time no see. I heard something happened here. Could you let me in so I can have a look? Oh, Mr. Ikeda. Yes, indeed. Something awful has happened. Please come in and follow me. I will notify Lady Higgins of your arrival in just a moment. Isn't this room a bit warm? What did you expect, dressed like that? Do you have any idea what month it is? It's July, for crying out loud. I begin to sweat just by looking at you. That's not what I meant. The room itself feels kind of warm. Hmm, now that you mention it. The air conditioner appears to be running, though. Perhaps they just let some fresh air in. I wonder why. You know, this room kind of smells of chlorine. It's a bit smelly. Maybe they opened a window to vent chlorine. I'm slowly getting a clearer picture of what happened here. Huh? W what do you mean? What kind of job is this anyway? Hmm. Well, I was asked to investigate Roy Higgins, the owner of this mansion. His daughter Ada asked me to do so. Mr. Higgins had recently become very afraid of something. It might have been a threat or blackmail. In any case, she asked me to get to the bottom of it. So, what does that have to do with what happened in this room? To be honest, I'm not sure about that yet. Let's examine this room. I'm sure we'll find some clues. I'm... I, here's the thing, okay? Mr. Ikeda, I am in control of you at the moment, and uh, you, you you don't know me, um, but I'm very bad at these things. So <laughs> let's just click on the, um, the obvious things in the room first. What a creepy painting. I can't say that whoever put it up here has good taste. I agree. That point... That pointing? No. That painting spoils the whole room. What is that supposed to be anyway? But it looks like a snake looking at a child and death or something similar to that is giving the child to the snake. I'm actually not entirely sure. A desk lamp and a globe are on the desk. There are some pieces of paper. They appear to be blank. Nothing appears to be out of the ordinary there. Okay, we've got some more pictures, just some regular landscape and portrait photos. They don't appear to have anything to do with the current situation. Right. It's a chandelier. It hangs from the ceiling on a thick cable. Looks like it can carry quite some weight. This room is at the north of the mansion, so the sunlight is not so strong here. Perhaps this window was opened a while ago. It's quite humid outside. Uh-huh. It's closed now. A bookshelf. It doesn't appear to have anything to do with what has happened in this room. Hey, that's strange. Did you find something? The feet of the coffee table legs and the marks on the carpet underneath are at different positions. It looks like this table has been moved recently. They might have moved it while cleaning. That could be the case, but... Look closer. There are some stains here. This carpet reeks of chlorine. 
I'm slowly beginning to understand what has happened here. Well, there was a murder and they cleaned it with chlorine, no? Surely. Okay, wait. Do, 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 no, I don't actually, sir. I don't understand what is happening. <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. Ah. Uh. Can I... Hmm. What, what can I actually... Everything has been neatly put back into its place, except for this chair. Yeah, as you can see right there. Uh, look, you can see the little sh shadows and the little uh, like stains on the on the carpet where the where the chair was before. Anyway, really, I don't see anything unusual about it. I don't think anyone with such unrefined senses as you would have noticed, Neniko. You piece of. Oh, okay. Was, was that it then? This chair has probably been moved recently. Right. Well, there must be something else that I can click on in this room then that I am missing. There we go. All right. Very, very well hidden. Oh, yes. Super well hidden. All right. So basically what I had to do was click on the cable at the top of the screen right there. Um, holding up the chandelier. All right. So that's uh, that's basically what happened here. Looks like my deductive skills were correct. What do you mean? Don't tell me that a self-professed genius like yourself has overlooked something. Based on the situation, what conclusion can be reached? You piece of... Uh, how are the smell of chlorine and the fact that the chair has been moved connected? All right, I'll spell it out for you. Examining the clues inside this room, I'd say that it's... Ah. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I assume it's suicide by hanging, right? I am assuming it's going to be that because it said very specifically that the cable can hang... Um, shall we say, can handle a suitable amount of weight and I would personally I'd assume that a person is going to be heavier than the chandelier itself obviously it very much depends on how large the chandelier is it seems pretty large to me but I don't think it's going to be you know what 60 70 80 kg you know large so we're going to go for suicide by hanging it has to be suicide by hanging all of the clues point to it Someone moved the coffee table, placed the chair on top of it, hung a rope from the chandelier, and then hung themselves. People had to clean up the mess after that, so that explains the smell of chlorine. They opened the window to get rid of the smell. Suicide by hanging? What? Why did your client have us come to a place with such bad vibes? This makes no sense at all. Maybe it's precisely why we are here. She expressly asked us to come here because she hoped we would discover something. I wonder what she's looking for. Uh, I don't feel so well. Why don't we get out of this horrible place? There you are. Hello, Ada. Uh, uh. As always, introverted Neniko hides behind my back. My apologies for calling you out of the blue. Not a problem at all. Ada looks pale. I can tell that she's quite upset because she, do she even doesn't react to Neniko's weird behavior. Um, I, I couldn't help but overhear. Ah, uh, well, that's embarrassing. Did you overhear what we were talking about just now? I'm sorry for being so insensitive. No, you were spot on. My father died by hanging in this room. Considering the situation, it undoubtedly was a suicide. I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you still wish me to continue my investigation? Since your father has passed away, there may not be any point to it now. No, please continue your investigation, Mr. Ikeda. I want to know what could have driven my father to take his own life. I want to know the truth, even if it hurts. All right. In that case, I'll continue the investigation. I believe that someone was blackmailing my father. If there is any evidence of it, then it has to be inside this room. I don't think my father would hide it anywhere else. I see. The evidence is hidden in this study. As I expected. I'm going to need your abilities, Neniko. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? I take some photos out of an envelope I had in my pocket and spread them out onto the desk. I just happen to have these in my pocket. Ada allowed me to take some photos of this study for my investigation. In other words, these photos were taken before her father committed suicide. I want you to memorize all the details. Uh, and just why would I? Fine, I'll take a look. 
Mumbling angrily, Neneko looks at the photos. Mr. Ikeda, something is bothering me as well. What is it? Please tell me anything, no matter how trivial it may seem. Any details may be helpful. A few days ago, I could see that my father was terrified when he had dozed off to sleep inside this room. I couldn't make out what he was saying, but he appeared to be delirious. Delirious? I believe he said something like, Be careful with her organs. Organs? Do you think he was talking to you? No, he sounded different than when he would speak to me. He spoke with an aggressive tone of voice, as if he was looking down on someone. I had never heard him speak like that before. Hmm. Be careful with her organs. What could that mean? Um, I'm done looking at the photos. That was fast. All right, Neneko, let's get to work. Compare the photos with the study as it is now, and see if you can find any differences. Differences? Do you expect me to find anything here? Ada said that her father might have hidden something in this study. We might be able to find something like a threatening letter or a testament. I don't think I'll be able to find anything like that. Ah, what a bother. As she continues to complain, Neneko looks around the study. What is she doing? Just observe. Neneko has a photographic memory. Once she has seen something, she can remember it later perfectly. Photographic memory? Yes, I hope to use her ability to discover what might have changed in this room. Sure, put me under more pressure, will you? Anyway, let me know if something catches your eye, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know what I think about it. All right, here we go. So now we're going to be working with her, and this is basically the whole premise of the game, where we are um, obviously trying to work out a grand mystery of what is going on in the world and continue forward with Neneko by our side, and she's obviously going to be helping us in um, almost every aspect. Okay, so I'm going to assume it's invisible ink on the blank pieces of paper. What do you bet? Hey, what do you bet? Has anything on the desk changed? Uh, uh, let me see. On the photos, America was at the front of this globe, but it is now showing the Pacific Ocean. Is it now showing the Pacific Ocean? I wonder if that means anything. I guess it was moved a little bit. Okay, so, uh, that, that's, I mean, uh, people might, you know, people might move the globe, but we'll, we'll see what happens. What about these? What about these photos? I don't think they were moved, not even a little bit. So there's nothing there. All right, I'm doing the things that are basically not going to be as likely because personally, I feel like this this picture is super, super likely to be something. And um, I, I don't think the chair is really anything or the table or anything like that. Maybe the bookshelf? Let's try. What about this bookshelf? Bookshelves are great hiding places. Uh, I don't think there is anything strange about it. All right. What about the table, then? They do appear to have been moved. Hmm, and there's nothing hidden underneath the carpet. Nothing here. Right, what about the chair, then? Even I can see the chair. That, no, nothing hidden inside of it. Okay, so I assume there is something... In my opinion, I mean, it could be... I mean, obviously, invisible ink. I mean, really. I guess it's not invisible ink, then. Let's try this, uh, try this painting. What about this painting? I don't think it has been moved. It creeps me out, though. Hey, don't say that in front of Ada. She's right. I don't really like it either. How long has this painting been here? It's been here for as long as I can remember. I don't really, re I don't really know where it came from. Hmm, I see. What is this painting even about? A skeletal Mary holding a dead child? Oh, it's dead. Oh, I didn't know that. And what is this snake-like creature on the right? A cookie-cutter shark. Huh? What did you say? As I said, it's a cookie cutter shark, a species of squaliform shark in the Dilatiidae. Dilati? Oh no, terrible. No, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the Dilati, Dilatiidae. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't even, don't even get me started. On this family, there we go. Th this family right here. Yes, its scientific name is. <laughs> Isistius Brazilian, uh, Brazilians this. Okay, yeah. All right, good. A gross deep sea fish that bores into the flesh of its prey with its incredibly sharp teeth. Great. Okay, that's all I needed to know. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. 
A cookie cutter shark, huh? Why would anyone paint that? Well, I mean, why not, right? Okay, so we've basically searched everything. What about the chandelier? The chandelier? Well, it's a bit bent, but not unexpected, considering that someone just hanged themselves from it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Nothing appears to be hidden here. Right, what about the window? Anything strange? The curtain has been moved, but I don't think that it matters. Right. Ah. Uh, okay, well, what about the painting again? Here we go. Look closely. A white triangle has been painted between the shark and the skeleton. Yeah, look at that. Do you see that right there? A triangle? Freemasons? I doubt there is any connection. Still, a triangle. It looks like a mountain. No. More like an island. Hey, I don't think that there's anything strange about this painting. Shall we look somewhere else? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a mountain. I mean, it looks like a mountain to me, but... Well, obviously, it really very much depends. What else has changed? One of the... One, one of the papers on the desk has been ripped. Ah, the pens have been moved as well. Could he have written a suicide note? But if he did, why haven't we found it yet? I assume that's the suicide note embedded in the painting. I, I mean, do we not want to look at, look at the back or something? Maybe we want to look at the back. So nothing else has been moved there. Nothing unusual about these. Nothing unusual about the chair. Nothing unusual about the table. What about this? Ah, here we go. Hey, what's up? I just noticed something in the bookshelf. The fourth volume of Shakespeare's complete works has been moved just a little bit. I look at the book Neneko indicated. I compare it with the photos I took, but don't see anything different about it. Are you sure that this book has really been moved? It looks exactly the same to me. Uh, you, you really can't tell the difference? You're such a hopeless cause, amateur hour. You little brat. It's a piece of cake for a gifted prodigy like me, though. Too bad an amateur like you could never have spotted this. You goose detective. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like her. I think she's really funny. All right. Life must be hard for you being such a hopeless cause. Shall I give you some of my loose change? Enough with the grandstanding. Just give me that book. All right, all right. Uh, uh, I, I can't reach it. Let me do it. I take the fourth volume of Shakespeare's complete works. Somehow the book falls onto Neneko's head as if it's pulled out of my hand by a mysterious power. What's going on? It's as if there's a higher power at work. He. Oopsies, my hand must have slipped. You did that on purpose. Definitely on purpose. That's gonna leave a bump. I can feel it swelling already. You idiot, die already, I will sue you. Huh? Something fell out of the bookshelf. An envelope and a note. Oh, here we go. Hey, looks like we found what we were looking for. It's Mr. Higgins's suicide note. Perfect. I am afraid that I can no longer live with myself. I will have to atone for my sins. What I did on Shironagasu Island is unforgivable. If I had only looked the other way, I might not have been tormented by these feelings of guilt. However, it is already too late for that. In a manner of speaking, because of what I know and allowed, I myself have become the demon of Shiro Nagasu Island. Ada, please believe me. I did what I had to do. I deeply regret my actions, but I do not regret their outcome. Please forgive me. Roy Higgins, July 23rd. Considering the date, this is definitely his suicide note. Shiru Nogasu Island. I've never heard of that island before. Very strange. Shiru Nogasu is a Japanese word. It means blue whale in English. And uh, uh, thank you, Neneko, for the scientific... <laughs> for the scientific explanation. Yeah, I uh, will not be attempting this. But instead of writing blue whale, he used the Japanese name. Shiro Nogasu. That's... that's definitely strange. Hmm. What about the other envelope? Could it be a blackmail letter? Dear Mr. Higgins, There have been serious concerns about the matter we discussed. 
Flight tickets and a ship from Unalaska have been arranged. Please find a check of $10,000 for expenses enclosed. If for any reason you cannot come yourself, you may appoint a representative instead. In that case, the representative must be a person you fully trust, such as a relative. The schedule is enclosed on a separate sheet of paper. Keep this confidential. Failure to appear will have severe consequences. Further details will be given upon arrival on Shirunagasu Island. Awaiting your arrival, Dan Raymond, Administrator. All right. It's a rather simple letter, typed on a typewriter. There's a signature at the bottom. It only contains basic information. There's also an envelope containing an air ticket and a check for $10,000. That's strange. It's not blackmail, but an invitation. Could this letter have led him to commit suicide? That's certainly a strange letter. This person provided $10,000 for expenses, which makes it even creepier. Serious concerns about the matter we discussed. Perhaps this led him to commit suicide. It might be related to something that happened in the past. Self-protection, money, or... I suddenly remember that Ada is still here and stopped talking. I pretend to cough and hand her the letter. Looks like I'll need to ask her a few questions. Alright. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, personally, I, I, I... It's unlike... I, I don't know. Is it unlikely that she would know Sir Raymond? I think it's pretty unlikely that she'd know him. So I'm going to talk about the island instead. She might know something about that. Have you ever heard about Shirunogasu Island? No, I've never heard of it. It's a strange name. I would have remembered if I had heard it before. I see. The letter mentions a place called Unalaska. I believe it's on the Aleutian Islands. Perhaps Shurunagasu Island is close by. Alright, I guess maybe she, she, maybe she does know Sir Raymond? Ada, do you know this Sir Raymond? No, I don't. He might have been one of my father's friends. I don't recall my father mentioning his name before, though. I see. A secret acquaintance. Right. Uh... Well, there's nothing else for me to ask. Oh, okay, I see. Further further examination of these subjects. Okay, good. Do you know anything about the Aleutian Islands? For instance, has your father been there in the past? Yes, I'm fully aware that my pronunciation of this is not correct, by the way. It probably isn't, at least. The Aleutian Islands. My father occasionally went fishing in Anchorage in Alaska. It was his hobby. If he went all the way to Anchorage, he must have taken long holidays. Yes, he was usually gone for two to three weeks. Is it possible that he pretended to go fishing there and actually went to that island instead? Ah, what's the matter? Uh, I'm not sure about this because this happened when I was very young. I remember going with him to a very dreary island a long time ago. Could that have been Shirunagasu Island? So you may have been there. That is definitely interesting information. Shirunagasu Island. I suddenly think about the globe, the globe that was moved. Perhaps it showed the Aleutian Islands instead of the Pacific Ocean. Shirunagasu Island has to be somewhere around there. Or maybe that eerie painting also gives a clue about where it is. There has to be something on that island, something so horrible that it could drive a millionaire to suicide. Huh? What's the matter? There appears to be something inside the book. Is it stuck to it? Has it been glued? What is this? A card with an IC chip on it? It doesn't look like a credit card, though. Quarantine level two? Quarantine? That doesn't sound very welcoming. What kind of card is this? Maybe it's a video rental membership card. Yeah, right. Ada, could I borrow this card? I want to find out more about it. Yes, of course. Go ahead. The quarantine level 2 card has been added to my inventory. Well, that's going to be very useful when we attempt to breach some kind of security. Alright. Um, I have a request, Mr. Ikeda. Could I ask you to go to that island and uncover the truth about my father? I will give you these $10,000. I beg you. I have to know the truth. That is not an easy task. I really want to help you, however, I would need to pretend that I am one of your father's relatives. However, being Asian, I don't think they would believe me. I don't think that I would be received with open arms. A Caucasian male would be better at pretending to be a relative of your father. 
I think I know just the right person for the job. Allow me to introduce him to you. No, I would like you to do it instead. Looks like she trusts only you. Why don't you agree to help her? It's not like you have any other jobs right now anyway. You talk too much. I'm trying to think of a way to make this work. Um, perhaps I could pretend to be your wife. Huh? What? Hmm, so I pretend to be your husband. Yes, exactly. Due to my poor health, I don't often show my face in high society, so I don't think there will be any doubts if you pretend to be my husband. You could show them a photo of us together. What do you think? Yes, that might actually work. I'm not sure if they will trust me, but it would be better than asking a complete stranger. There shouldn't be any reason for them to be suspicious of me then. Huh? Wait a minute. If you're going to that island, wh wh what about me? You'll be staying here, of course, house sitter. House sitter? But you told me that your neighborhood is full of weirdos. Just the thought of being surrounded by crazy people when I'm by myself gives me the chills. Hey, you made it sound as if I'm a weirdo myself. Hey, I, I, I take back what I suggested. You should stay here with me. Sorry, I've already made up my mind. Mr. Ikeda, do you mean that... However, I have one condition. Do not make your father's death public until we get back. If that would leak out, they will not trust me. I understand. Very well, I promise. All right. It's time for me to go to Shirunagasu Island. N no, please don't go. You can't. Well, I, I, personally, I feel like she should just come along. I think she's very helpful. The Bering Sea is extremely rough. A bone-chilling wind is roaring, and the Black Sea is swirling beneath a cloudy sky. Even though it is July, it feels like it's freezing. Occasionally, the tips of the waves that hit the hull splash onto the deck. The Aleutian Islands only, only have around 10 days of clear weather a year. Most of the time, it's cloudy or it storms. It's hard to believe that this is summer weather. How much worse would winter be? I don't even want to think about it. Hmm. A week after I visited the Higgins Mansion, I flew from New York to Unalaska with a Seattle transfer. I boarded this ship in Unalaska and am now on my way to Shiro Nogasu Island. It's about the same size as a ferry for hundreds of passengers, a 3,000 ton class luxury passenger ship. It's mind boggling that this is a private ship. I try to use my GPS. I can't get it to work. It can't seem to find any satellite radio waves. Perhaps there's a GPS jammer or something like that on this ship. I guess they really don't want anyone to find out where the island is located. Very suspicious. I should be on my toes. Things will definitely get ugly if they find out who I really am. I should also keep in mind that someone might try to harm me. Anyway, I should head back inside. I'll catch a cold if I stay out here. Phew. It's much warmer inside than on deck. Can't believe that this is summer weather here. This weather is seriously messing with my senses. Huh? Looks like some kelp ended up inside the ship. Probably because of the stormy weather. There must be one or two pieces of kelp there. Nothing strange about it. <laughs> uh, I love it. That's obviously Neneko right there. Okay, so that's... Uh, wow, there's even a bar. There's no bartender, so I guess I'll have to be self-service. I might have a drink later. There's even a piano. Too bad I don't know how to play it. I don't see any other passengers. They're probably in another lounge or in their own private rooms. All these areas look the same. Or perhaps they're trying to avoid contact with the other passengers. I might have to throw up if I do, though. The ship is rocking back and forth. I'll pass for now, in terms of having a, having a drink. Sea Kelp says, Uh, uh... <laughs> what the? Did the kelp just say something? Maybe I'm just imagining things. Hmm. I must be exhausted. I could have sworn that the kelp was talking. Uh... That's a big piece of kelp. I don't think I can use it to make good soup stock with it, though. 
Ikeda, I'll kill you. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, stop kicking me. I'm on the verge of death and all you do is make fun of me. Stop exaggerating, you're just seasick. Come to think of it, I don't remember asking you to tag along in the first place. Didn't I tell you to stay in New York? And I'm already starting to regret that I followed you. Good grief. Okay, listen up. I'm Taro Higgins, the son-in-law of Roy Higgins. You have to pretend to be my younger sister. Got it? Aren't you overdoing it a bit? Why are you using a fake name? For better or worse, my real name is too well known in New York. Someone might figure out who I am if they hear my real name. So I have to be careful. You're so full of yourself. Hey, I'm not taking any chances, all right? We have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, you told me that several times already. Be a good girl, then. Uh, hey, are you okay? Is there some kelp stuck in there? What? That just sounded very nasty. No, you're just imagining things. I was only asking if you're feeling okay. You're shady, as always. And your hair is messy, as always. Right, okay. Ah, her hair is so long. Is she trying to set a record? Come to think of it, it does look like kelp. Smells like it, too. Were you just having a private joke at my expense? What? No, of course not. Her hair is actually pretty, but she just hasn't taken care of it. Perhaps she doesn't leave her house much? Okay, so... Where do I, where do I go from here? I can see your belly. So? It's just my belly. You could catch a cold. She's such a tomboy. Right. You're having it rough, aren't you? No, can't you see I'm having the time of my life? Of course I'm having it rough, you idiot. Wipe the drool from your face before you talk. It's grossing me out. Too exhausted to wipe it. Uh, you're right, Kelp. I mean, Neneko. <laughs> if you ever tease me again, I will skin you alive. What's with you all of a sudden? I'll eat your liver with some fava beans and a nice can tea. <laughs> Uh, I like I like the reference. I like the reference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, how can you say such terrible things to someone you always looked up to? Why didn't you throw up whatever is floating around inside your stomach? I'm sure that would make you feel a bit better. Can I throw up here? No way. Hang on. Let me get a bucket. Just as I'm about to leave, two passengers appear. Neneko immediately switches back to pretending to be kelp. Oh, I don't believe we've met. My name is Akira Edgeworth. Edgeworth, Edgeworth yes, that's it. That's my name. I, uh, I forgot it for a second. And uh, I generally tend to mispronounce everyone's names. Hmm, very good. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. This is my attendant, Giselle Reed. The pleasure is all mine. I'm Taro Higgins. Roy Higgins' son-in-law and Ada Higgins' husband. Akira Edgeworth, huh? Guessing from her name, I'd say that she's probably Scottish. I cannot do a Scottish accent, so you will have to make do with my terrible terribleness. Yes, she's rather young, about the same age as Neneko. Her attendant, Giselle, though, I'm not so sure where she's from. Perhaps she's biracial. I see, you're a relative of Mr. Higgins. There has been some chatter about you on the grapevine. A pleasure to meet you. Akira looks at me attentively. She appears to be suspicious of me. I'm sure my cover would have been blown if I hadn't spread some false rumors in advance. What do you know about the island? Why didn't Mr. Higgins come himself? My father-in-law has been under the weather recently. That's why he asked me to go instead. He said that I'm trustworthy enough, or should I say that he didn't entrust this to anyone else? The wealthy have many enemies. You understand that, don't you? Yes, of course. It appears that my father also has a lot of enemies. Despite his terminal illness, he still clings to his position and status. It's quite absurd. Young lady, we should not discuss this matter any further. Yes, you are right. I'm afraid I've said too much already. I do hope that Mr. Higgins will make a speedy recovery. Thank you. I'll be sure to mention that to him upon my return. I wish you a pleasant day. Phew. Oh, I almost forgot. Allow me to give you a piece of advice. 
advice. Akira draws closer and whispers into my ear. Don't stick your nose too deep into things if you don't know about the island. It could seriously impact your life expectancy. What's that supposed to mean? I mean exactly what I said. Don't go snooping around too much, if you value your life, that is. Take care of yourself, Mr. Taro Higgins. Yes, I'm sure she so t certainly believes our story. I I'm sure she doesn't already know who we are. Yes, Akira smiles and walks away. Oh boy, I was certain she saw right through me. What a nasty girl. Whoa, you startled me there. I had completely forgotten about you. She has a bad attitude. Watch your back around her. No need to tell me. I'm always careful. Yes, <laughs> I'm always careful. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to get backstabbed instantly here. Hey, do you feel any better now? Uh, are you listening? I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. There's, a, there's another person. Oh, dear. Are you all right? Do you need to throw up? A woman appears out of nowhere and touches Neneko's back. Eee. Neneko isn't used to being touched. Startled, she jumps up. I'm sorry, you don't like being touched, do you? Neneko suddenly reminds me of a beached whale. She kicks my leg several times. I think she's trying to ask me to step in. Ah, don't worry about her. She's not really a people person, and she was startled when you touched her. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do so. Are you her relative? I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Riel Bextor. Okay, uh, if, if, that's, if that's really your name, I'm Taro Higgins. This is my sister, Neneko Uzi Iz I Izumozaki. Yes, okay, very good. Mr. Higgins, the multimillionaire, it's a pleasure to meet you. Ah, no, I'm just his son-in-law. Uh, would you happen to have a bag or something similar that I could use? I believe my darling sister is about to throw up. Will a plastic bag do? I also have some motion sickness pills. Maybe she should empty her stomach first. Here, Neneko, take this plastic bag. Riel gives Neneko a plastic bag. She then starts rubbing Neneko's back, totally forgetting what I told her a minute ago. Neneko doesn't seem to react this time, probably because she's too preoccupied on vomiting her stomach out. You're used to this, aren't you? Are you a doctor or a nurse? How did you know? You're right, you have a keen eye. I work as an internist at a small hospital in Washington. I'm impressed that you could figure that out. Are you a detective? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm just a regular white collar worker. Hmm, she's surprisingly perceptive. Anyway, it's nice to finally see some friendly faces. This may sound rude, but almost everyone else on this ship is quite standoffish. Were you invited to come here? Uh, no. My uncle was invited to come on this trip, however, he suddenly became ill, so I came on his behalf instead. He told me that all travel and accommodation costs were taken care of, and that I would be staying at the famous Sir Raymond's Louis Associer mansion. My uncle is uh, usually a cheapskate, but he was surprisingly generous this time. Unusually so. Hmm? Didn't you receive $10,000? $10,000? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, no. Forget about it. Hmm. So she didn't receive any money for expenses. Oh, now I'm becoming curious. Could I ask you a few questions? Yes, of course. I hope I can answer them. Ah, here we go. All right, so we have a number of different uh, conversation options here that we can explore. But I think that's actually going to be it. I think I'm going to leave you to check out the game for yourself through the link in the description. It is only four pounds, at least four great British pounds, at least. That is my own currency, obviously. So if it is converted into US dollar, I would assume it's probably going to be about six, maybe seven dollars. So very cheap for the amount of content that you're going to get. And personally, I want to see where this goes, so I'm going to continue playing this. And as I say, you can pick it up very, very nicely from the link. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.